That's right, Darren. Welcome in now to the first football Friday night of the conference season. Sure, some teams didn't play conference games, and we'll get to that, but let's start with the biggest game in the biggest conference. That's Harbor heading down the road to take on Bentonville. First home game of the season for the Bentonville Tigers. They went 3-0 in the non-conference anyways. Start off Harbor, that's Braxton Scott. He rolls out, ball pops out, scooped up by Zane Ochoa. He turns that scoop into a scoop and score. 7-0 Bentonville early. Get ready for a lot of Tigers highlights in this one, folks. Still the first quarter, Andrew Edwards dropping back for Bentonville. Looks, has to roll to his left. Looks like he's going to scramble. Now he finds his guy, Chaz Nimrod. He backs into the end zone, 14-0 Bentonville. And that connection would work all night. Edwards, plenty of time. He heaves it deep. Nimrod goes up in between two defenders, comes down with the ball and the touchdown, 20-0 Tigers. Harbor trying to get something going, no dice. Cole Joyce with the pick. The pick turns into a six. That's another touchdown on the defensive end. 30-0 Bentonville. They're not done. Josh Ficklin now going to get things done in the running game for the Tigers. 37-0. And let's, why not, keep it going. Bentonville this time fakes the handoff. Edwards throw to the outside. It's caught. That's uh, Cade Foster. Gets tackled out of bounds. Things, though, just keep spiraling if you're Harbor and keep going great if you're Bentonville. Harbor comes up with a stop there. And then on the defensive end, well, Bentonville was just swarming the ball all night. No more evidence needed than this one right here. Pass is complete. One Tiger hits, two Tiger hits, three. That's what they do. 11 guys to the football. And that's how you get a final like this. Bentonville off to a perfect start. 4-0 on the season. 1-0 in conference play. The Tigers look like the team to beat in the 7A West. All right, now to one of those games that uh, we didn't even know about before Tuesday. Greenwood and Bentonville West, each supposed to play conference game, each canceled due to COVID-19. They play each other. Greenwood, though, they don't care if they're playing up a conference. L.D. Richmond hits Caden Brown. He juggles it into the end zone. Touchdown, Greenwood. Dalton McDonald, though, he's got a good arm on him. He hits Ty Durham. That gets down to the five-yard line, and that sets up a McDonald touchdown pass to Luke Miller. It's 7-7. West putting up more of a fight than anyone Greenwood's faced so far this year. L.D. Richmond's pass, Caden Brown, ball pops out. Luckily, Greenwood falls on it. And uh, that's good for the Bulldogs. Bad news for Bentonville West. Richmond scrambles, finally finds time. Wide receiver, looking like his feet were in the end zone. Ball wasn't, though. That goes down at the one. And now here comes the Greenwood defense. Jaden Jasna pops out of nowhere. He takes the McDonald pass himself. And that turns into another Greenwood touchdown. Hunter Wilkinson, Bulldog star back. It's in there. Now it's time. Moose. The Moose is loose. 28 7 Greenwood at that point. Bentonville West would fight back in this one. Not quite enough, though. 35-28 is the final. It's the closest game yet for Greenwood this year and how they've beaten three schools in the vaunted 7A West. Well, we had smaller schools in action around the state as well, of course. Got a couple of the biggest matchups from the 3A and 4A. That's coming up next.
We talked a lot about cancellations and reschedules this week, but we got spoiled with some great conference matchups as well. The 3A1, no exception, as Charleston comes to Greenland to kick off 3A1 play. This is a game you may remember last year and the last two years, in fact, decided in the final minutes. Let's see how that goes this time. Jet Dennis for Greenland hits the hole. Nothing but open field. That's where Dennis is a menace. He jets in for six. Six nothing Pirates early. Still the first quarter, though. Charleston driving back, trying to answer Brandon Scott. He hits Brecken Ketter up the middle for a big gain. That drive would bleed then into the second quarter and bleed into the end zone here. The other Ketter this time finishes it off. Brevin takes it in, ties the game at six extra points and two-point conversions were a bit of a mess so it was six six at this point into the second quarter now Scott rolling to his right looking for someone he wasn't looking for Seth center though Greenland Pirate comes up with the ball little careless gets down to about the one it pops out luckily for Greenland it's a green jersey that falls on top of it really lucky in fact because it then leads to the next play right here that's Tucker Metters he punches it in for six and it's 12 to six Greenland Charleston responds immediately quick drive Brecken Ketter into the end zone and this one was all Charleston Tigers 48 to 18 they run away with it and they rebound from a big loss last week to Ozark now Charleston sitting atop the 3A1 at 1 and 0 oh. How about some 4A action down in Waldron? Waldron against Mina, and Waldron, well, they haven't beaten the Bearcats in over 20 years. Braden Williams, quick pass to Bryson Bailey. He's gonna go all the way down the sideline before finally getting dragged down inside the red zone. Now though, fourth down, going for it. Pass falls incomplete. Tough break there for Waldron. Max Montgomery of Mina now. He hits Jake Wiles over the middle. He's going to get a big game. One stiff arm, he does a trick. Spin move, eventually goes out of bounds. That drive then ends in a, in a turnover of down, on downs. On the other side of things, teams weren't good at going for it on fourth down in this one. Ball pops out this time, goes to Mina. Mina would capitalize. One yard touchdown run, seven nothing Bearcats at this one. Another fourth down conversion is short. That leads to a big play, interception. That's Caden Fuller, picks off the pass. No one in front of him. He's gonna go 93 yards for the touchdown. That makes it 14 to seven Waldron. But that's not how this one would end, guys. Mina, a touchdown pass with five seconds left. We'll get you the video on social media. And the Bearcats beat the Bulldogs to start conference play 1-0. 28-21 was the final in that one. We're almost to the end now. But before we do, we'll head to check on our friends in the central part of the state. That's coming up next.
It's finally time to head down to the central section of Arkansas and check out our one Area 7A Central team in action. That's, of course, the Fort Smith Northside Grizzlies. They were in Bryant tonight taking on the Hornets. Some might consider Bryant the favorite to win it all, and you're going to see why. Some Northside action first, though. Drayden Norwood doing what Drayden Norwood does, getting to the edge. Bryant, though, has that speed. They managed to knock him down. Not this time, though. Norwood looks like he's going to go outside, stays inside, breaks some tackles. Touchdown Grizzlies, and that would be, sorry to say, the only one that they score. Corey Nichols rolls out for Bryant. He hits Deja Hall for the first down as he's knocked out of bounds. Same drive, He this time handoff. Jonah Brewster for Bryant. He drags some defenders out of bounds for another first down, and that drive would finish here. Jamarian Bracey takes it, bounces off one tackler, hits the outside, goes in for six, and Bryant with the big win. That's pretty much what they do. 40 Eight to seven over Fort Smith Northside. The Grizzlies start off the conference season 0 and 1. That's it for Football Friday Night. If you missed any highlights or any scores, be sure to head to our website. That's 5newsonline.com. And keep an eye out on Monday. That's when we'll put up the four nominees that we want you guys to vote on for Yarnell's sweetest play. And, of course, you didn't see a play tonight in the highlights that you thought, hmm, that one should be sent in? Do it. My email is tyler.cass at kfsm.com. Send me something, and, heck, maybe you could win your school some ice cream. So that wraps up the first week of conference play. We'll be back next week for week two of conference action and another edition of Football Friday Night.